Ir atsiriu, dopo un bel, atsiriu a mini in visio, a un nata, a un chiave di cenano in vecchiorina, e ci vai a vecchio di stas, a mini in visio, a un specifico di zona. The zona, this is a zona, here an example of it, is a very loud, top over, very primitive, extremely loud and harsh sound, with most, I mean, you're just meant to do dancing, doing a dance in a circle, you should have to stay in the center so you can hear them when you're, when you're dancing, but not with the zona. The zona can tell you the football field as far as the volume, so it could be anywhere in the general area, you could hear it just fine. The, uh, the zona has a lot of different aspects about it. Of, uh, in the culture. It was, uh, it's a very widespread instrument. It extends all the way from China to Morocco. Nobody's really sure where it originated, uh, but it's, it's uh, common, I mean, in weddings down in Zona. The instrument was, because it was so loud and so harsh, it was often associated with driving away devils, sort of wedding and playing good because it helps it scare them away. And also, supposedly, it's played by them as well, demons. So if you go to if you go to heaven, you get a harp. If you go to hell, you get a zona. <laughs> That's just, that was part of the folk culture. And in the villages, the zona was a king of instruments. A zona, a zona jean, a zona player, was a highly respected individual who was considered the, the most skilled of all musicians. If you could play a zona, you could play anything. He's not in the folk world. And he was basically an unofficial judge. So if he had a dispute in the village, you'd go to the zona player, he would decide. He would, uh, at a difficult childbirth, he would be inside playing the zona and not to drum away any harm while the mother's trying to give birth. Uh, if you had needed a confidant to explain, uh, share a problem with, the, the zona be, uh, G would be the person you talk to. He doesn't tell anybody who lives there. It's part of his role to be this kind of person to be respected in the community. Which is kind of funny because he was very high in the village community. In the city community, though, he was very low. He used to make jokes about, may your daughter run off with a Zerna player as the lowest kind of person in the village because he was so identified with the villages. Most Zernas were made out of uh, fruit wood, uh, traditionally. This particular one is made out of cherry wood. And the Zerna, this is a, was a, a master player. A Zerna was not merely a simple instrument, but if you play it at a wedding and somebody really liked your playing, what you would do is you would grab this one right out of your mouth after the thing there and say, I'm going to decorate it. You take it to a silversmith and you have designs put on it, decorations, in order to enhance the instrument to show that this is a master player. Ironically, this often ruined the instrument because it changed the tone of the instrument with the silver one. I thought, what can you do? I mean, he's the guy trying to do you a favor, so you have to go along with it. This particular instrument was decorated this way, but also apparently at a later point it started to develop a crack in the instrument here. So they took a wire and they wrapped it around it very tightly here and here in order to keep the crack sealed on this particular instrument. This came from the uh, village of Vedspirk in Harkin. It was brought to this country uh, by uh, Garabed Afahamian. And Garabed had immigrated to, and uh, ended up in Lowell. And Garabit's son George, who was a Draker, donated the instrument to the museum. Aside from the wood itself, the other important aspect of it is the, how it's grown. They use a very a reed right here for it, and this disc is typical too. This is made out of mother of pearl. And so the reed would fit right through the mother of pearl like that. So when you put it on the instrument and you're blowing on it, you put your mouth against the plate because your cheeks get very distended. And you use circular breathing, that is, as you're blowing out, you're breathing in through your nose at the same time, you never stop. So as a result, you feel, you know, you play a weird, you stop to take a breath and take another thing, you don't do that. It's all circular breathing. But what happens, if, if, if the instrument should get jammed, say the, uh, the reed closes, you gotta change it quick, you don't wanna interrupt the, the music, so you just pull it out quick, drop it, you put another one in, and you continue playing. And so you would have several ready just in case in order to play the instrument. And these are pretty common, very identified with Armenian village life, uh, the Davo and Zerna. And the Zerna was played up until, and, and Armenia itself was played basically until about the 1960s when the clarinet started to replace it in the villages in Armenia. 
Now, since the Republic of Armenia is free again, it's to be a very rival there. There's a lot of more Zerna players, and so uh, you can go onto YouTube. You can find Armenian Zerna players all the time. Anytime say the Karian dance group performs in Armenia, they will use double and Zerna for the instrument. In this, um, it hasn't quite reached its prominence yet. Today, we tend to focus more on the uh, Dudu as the national instrument of Armenia. The reason you do that is not because is because the Dutuk is the only instrument that's native to Armenia. The, which the Dutuk itself, which is native of Apricot wood, the reed for it actually comes from the Armenian highlands. It's not played anywhere else in the world except that part of the South Caucasus. And so as we thought, it's very native to Armenia, whereas all the other instruments, the, the, many, uh, the sugar instruments, the wind instruments, you are brought in from other parts of the world to it. But the Dutuk is native to Armenia. But the king of instruments is the Zerna. Uh, the Armenian Museum of America is here to uh, share our culture and our stories with the public. We thank you for listening. We hope you'll join us again.